this shows more uh, a propagation a um, a progress in neurogenesis in autism and this is the area where you have a steep increase in uh, connectivities between uh, dendrites and then you have a sharp fall uh, and that is supposed to tell us that the that there is finally a pruning but the pruning is probably abnormal and that's why apparently uh, in uh, ASD you have a problem in uh, uh, processing information this is uh, this shows you the difference between control and P10 uh, and a, uh, a condition um, knockout uh, in the brain and there you see that one of the things that P10 which is in the upstream in uh, the other figure that I showed you how can it increase the, um, the hyperconnectivity and the hypergrowth of the cells of the neurons and here you have these spines that are much thicker than here and much denser than here that's an individual axon this is this is the video, this is the dendrite that comes out of the axon oh, okay. and here you have something interesting <laughs> you have a uh, this is one axon in which and this is a human brain and this is a paper from the group of the guy that invented um, what do you call that thing no 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 uh, clarity. clarity clarity is electrophoresis of the brain where you r remove all the extracellular matrix and you are left with intact neurons so so you show they show you that there is something like a hairpin in th that a the um, the spurs connected one to each other, and if an electrician would have sound shown this, he, he would tell you that it may be a, a shortcut or something in terms of electric. So this is more or less uh, the f uh, a scheme that shows you the hyperconnectivity of these diseases, the monogenetic diseases. And this is the only rat syndrome is the only one that have a, a, a hyperconnectivity. The normal would be here. So now the question is, if uh, actually uh, EMF in uh, newborns can do all these things can in a in either stage can down regulate I mean kill the uh, part of the neurons or overactivate the growth of neurons and so I think that what should be done is the following you have to titrate the EMF on neural stem cells to determine the condition for the following first of all in culture in neurons in, or neuron stem cells to find out the condition for all overgrowth of dendrites which is giving us hyperconnectivity and then do proteomics if we succeed to find the conditions to get that do proteomics of this against the controls uh, and then in vivo to screen the uh, rat dendrite overgrowth under different conditions of EMF 
uh, and use this information, and use the information gained by the cul in culture studies to find a way to inhibit this under the same condition that causes it. And then that should be accompanied by uh, behavioral testing in vivo. And this is more or less what I have to tell you. Can you leave that last slide off, please? <coughs> so how would you screen? How, what, how, so, what, what would a screen look like? So I'm a, a, a very little expert in all this EMF. Somebody has to teach that to me. And then exposing to different times in culture, um, exposing to different uh, frequencies, and just looking at what happened each in each time point. If you can see uh, either decrease or increase of the cell growth, the neuronal, neuronal cell growth, and, and, and the morphology. I just would point out that one of the most, I thought, amazing things that I tried to show very quickly was the evidence that a short exposure at a critical time of development for the, it was, and this had to do with the oocyte development in, in the fruit fly, <laughs> had a more powerful effect than a continuous exposure over so that would go with a pregnant woman that has is getting this is something that I don't understand 50 hertz someone says that 50 hertz can traverse rocks how come well I mean that's a very uh, interesting question you know we, we there is a study that was just published in the epidemiology literature from the University of Washington very good group that actually did an analysis of women who had ultrasound, I assume you've seen this, right, in the first trimester, and they found that the ultrasound in the first trimester was associated with um, an increase of autism, whereas ultrasound in the second and third was not, which would obviously be consistent with this critical window mm -hmm. that we, you know, we are all concerned This about. ultrasound thing... There's, a, there's an American guy that went to China at the, at the time the Chinese wouldn't allow more than one child, right? right? So if you have another child and you have to run an abortion on the hair, yeah. you first of all ultrasound her, yeah. and then you take out the fetus and right. look at the brain, right? Yeah. But there are many abstracts, but who can read the Chinese? Basically, at the, at what they would do is in a Chinese factory back in the one-child policy days, every woman had to have a urine test for pregnancy once a month. And that's how they controlled the, the population. They had to have a urine test. And if they tested positive and they were not allowed to have a baby and they were not married and all the horrible things, we don't need to talk about the ethics. We don't, um, no one is here from China. It doesn't yeah. matter, but I'm just <laughs> telling you what they did, what he's talking about. And then they would take the woman who was scheduled to have an abortion because she wasn't permitted to have a child. And those women would then be exposed and then they would do studies of neuronal cells at that point. See, my, my children were born in uh, St. Louis in Barnes Hospital yeah. at the 70s and th they got a, a, an ultrasound. But what I see in the literature that the ultrasound is slowly going up in terms of um, energy up to now. Really? So maybe they are lucky that the Doppler thing then was lower. lower. Um, on your suggestion, are you talking more for ELF or RF? Because the yeah, yeah. So, that so, 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 that is, so this is the thing on, on different kind of, uh, of exposures. Because if you if there's a pregnant woman and you're asking yourself the questions, if the thing goes through the fontanella while the fetus is still in, you can, I mean, 
what is going to happen in terms of the effect of the 900 megahertz vis-a-vis -vis the 50 hertz? I just don't know anything. I'm, I just don't understand the whole physics of this. Could one get brains from the NTP study to look at the neuron stuff? Because there really is this clarity method for really... It, it, they're beautiful pictures, and one could really look at the dendritic uh, pruning and such things. Do you think that they would lend a couple hundred brains out? Well, Which one has the funding? The brains are all fixed. Fiorella. You have you have materials. You don't understand. So this Fiorella is the kind of study where thousands and thousands of frozen. This is the kind of please tell them what you have. Like yes, because we have enough. Enough. Okay, so okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You're talking about human yeah. brains? I, no, no. I rat know. Rat brains. Rat brains. No, so, um, wait. We have still in place the device is bought for the magnetic field from electricity. Uh, and uh, those are for radio frequency. They are still in place because our laboratory are, are very, very large and we, we have the place to maintain them also because they costed a lot of money and uh, we invested in that. And we would also like to open the laboratory.